When am I going to catch up on this 5,000? You know what? We're going to do that today. We're going to do some squats this morning. That was a very Kermit voice. Mmm, joke's on you, my friend. Uh, in fact, if you want to learn how to do a Kermit, if you want to learn how to do vocal control, you actually do need to do a Kermit voice in order to get that way. Yay! In fact, one of the ways you learn to do vocal feminization is by doing a Kermit voice. Yay! Mmm. Mmm. Black magic, in case you didn't know, but indeed, because by <clears throat> the Kermit the Frog voice contract con ah. the Kermit the Frog voice constricts your vocal cords in such a way it actually simulates the exact position your throat needs to be in order to feminize your voice. So you simply go from the Kermit voice and you start raising yourself up into your higher resonance and you slowly start pushing it up and it helps you control the way your voice is. See? Amazing! Yay! So, for example, try and do yourself a Kermit the Frog voice. You'll feel the back of your nose and the back of your throat constricting because the entire way you bring your voice up is you're making less space for the sound waves to bounce around in. And by doing a Kermit the Frog voice, you're actually formulating your neck, your throat, your vocal cords, your larynx, and your, um... Uh, those parts of your throat into a way that would uh, complement a female voice. It's just, to start with, you have to master the Kermit the Frog voice to begin with. Yay! Try it! You'll see what I mean. In fact, the Kermit the Frog voice is also a great uh, vocal warm-up as well. Because, uh... One thing you'll notice if you ever try doing vocal training for any kind of, like, voice acting or whatever, like, going from your default voice into whatever voice you're trying to go forward, you'll have, a, you'll have a, like, a period of time where it's very hard to do. Because, as with anything, your, your vocal cords are a muscle, and they are an instrument. You need to warm that instrument up before it can work at its optimal uh, capacity. See, the thing is, I, I know, like, a lot of the ins and outs of how to sound feminine. I just lack the actualization to actually do it. <laughs> and I don't know, I think, I, like, okay, real talk, real talk. Vocal training, and specifically for trans girls especially, there's a large, there's a large part of comfortability. Like, not many, pe not many people talk about the imposter syndrome that goes with it. Especially, like, the older you are, the more I think this plays into a dividend. Because, for me especially, I know I can, I know I can, I, can, I know I have the ability to do a very feminine voice, but a lot of the time, I, I end up going out in, pu out in public, and I keep thinking to myself, oh god, they probably think I'm a man. If I sound like a girl, I'm gonna be an idiot. And, like, it, it sets off your imposter syndrome. So rather than doing the voice you know you can do and that you know that resonates with you the best, you end up falling back to your masculine voice because it's what you're comfortable with and you know it's what's safe. Like, imposter syndrome affects more than just your ability to look the way you want to look and be the way you want to be. It is, in fact, one of the leading reasons why a lot of trans girls don't end up... And, and trans men, in fact, uh, don't get to do the voice they want to do because... It, that, that is entirely my thing. Like, the reason I'm not able to maintain my feminine voice is A, I'm a bub bubbly baby bitch and I get way too hyperactive. And when I get really excited, when I get really energetic, I completely lose control of my vocal cords. Secondly, I've been talking every day for 36 days, so my vocal cords are also just stretched and ruined currently. Um, um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So, um, like, the whole thing with... Uh, so, uh, this is whether you're trans, gay, like, whatever. It's really important that you do what makes you comfortable. And I, I say this from my perspective because I feel like I've gone through the ringer in a lot of elements of this. And sure, my voice may not be the most effeminate right now, but I know it's like something I'm working on. It's something that over time is going to get better. And, you know, I'm, I may not sound like I know what I'm talking about, but it's like, it's like a lot of things. Like, I may not seem intelligent. I may not seem very... Um, together with it. But from certain things that I'm passionate about, I can talk to you for days about. Like, from a from a theoretics point of view, like, there are certain things that, um, there are certain things that I may not be do able to do well in practice, but from a theoretical side of things, 
I know them to a T. Like, you talk to me about psychology, you talk to me about, the like, the general human condition, you talk to me about gaming, artwork, uh, certain elements of technology, um, and I could talk my, my heart, to, uh, my heart's out, like, um, anything that kind of comes back to, like, why and how people do things. And it's a similar thing with, with, uh, with vocal training. Like, from a theoretical side of things, I could tell you the ins and outs of how your throat is supposed to, like, uh, tense up and how you're supposed to, like, get to that stage. Even though, th realistically, I'm not quite there myself. I mean, for example, if, if anyone here has wanted to learn the fundamentals of vocal training. I'm not even talking like vocal feminization here. I'm just talking like if you want to be a voice actor. Because vocal feminization, vocal masculinization for trans people is just in its rawest forms. Voice training and it's the same voice training that uh, voice actors do, or uh, actors in general do when they're trying to get on the main stage, you know, if they're trying to do a certain um, uh, accent or uh, tone, for example. It's all the same kind of umbrella, just different sort of sides of that umbrella. And a lot of it just comes down to understanding how, how and what parts of your body you need to control. And I know for a lot of, a lot of my trans friends, like, Getting started is such a hard hard point because you just don't know where to begin. It's like, oh boy, because it's it's why you tend to hear a lot of trans girls just assume they know like they 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 don't understand that sounding like a girl isn't all about pitch. Because if you sound like you're doing nothing but pitch, you just end up sounding like a Paimon. Hi guys, I'm Makari. Ha <laughs> ha, it's so good to meet you. Ha ha ha. Which you know. It's, it's that, like, it's almost a level of ignorance because they just assume that that's what women sound like. When in reality, I know, I know a lot of women that sound deeper than I do. Like, I know a lot of women who sound incredibly masculine. Because the, the actual spectrum of what your voice sounds like is so broad. And when, a lot of the times when people call you out and they're like, Oh, you don't sound like a woman. These people have never heard a woman in their fucking life. The people who actually call you out for not sounding the way they think you should sound, these people don't know what people actually sound like. If these people actually understood uh, and had been hanging, had would have hung around even a single person in their life, they would have understood that women can sound masculine and men can sound feminine. There is no defined way that a single gender should sound. And at the end, they voice, the, 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 especially in modern society, like. The, uh, the, 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 uh, what's the word, um, the, uh, requirement to be a specific conformity to a gender role is so nonsensical. There's nothing wrong with being a woman that does masculine things. There's nothing wrong with being a man that does womanly things. Like, we, we live in a very, uh, I have to say, a very free society. We live in, we live in a very expressive society these days where we're able to be and do what we want. For the most part. Um, so. It really all just. It really all does. And I wish I could like abide by my own st uh, saying sometimes. Um, it all comes back down to what you're comfortable with. Sure we can have aspirations. But you should never do. You should never try and push yourself to something that you're uncomfortable with. Or sorry. Not uncomfortable. Because it, doing what's uncomfortable sometimes. Is what allows us to push our boundaries. And learn new things. Like, sometimes you have to do what's uncomfy to discover yourself. What I mean is, y you never have to do something you don't want to. You have to find what makes you happy. Like, for me, theoretically, I could just keep this voice for the rest of my life. I, I could, from this point onwards, never do a single bit of voice training again. But the thing is, I have ambition. I have things I want to do. My, my, my voice training isn't just about vocal feminization. It's about wanting to be a voice actor. I want to be able to do more than just sound like a woman, or <clears throat> sound like sound like a man. Because honestly, if I was gonna start doing, um, if I'm gonna start doing voice training, like the 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 best thing about being a trans person is that you have range. You have so much range. It allows you to reach the de deepest, darkest elements of your voice. It allows you to call from such a disparity. You have. A scope that almost no one else will have. Especially when you've spent 31 years of your life sounding like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a skill set, to say the least.
And I think, I, especially like trans people, they, 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 trans people have a skill set that not many people really get to have. Like a lot of a lot of voice actors, they tend to have one specific like section of vocality they're really good with. You'll find that most trans people who have spent even the slightest amount of time training their voice will have the widest range of vocal tones ever. In fact, some of the most pro prominent voice actors are trans people. And you wonder what the scary thing is? I guarantee you there are VTubers that you guys watch who are trans that you don't even know they're trans. And that's because that's how, that's how scary voice acting can be. Or there are male, v there are male uh, VTubers who are female that you just would never expect were. Or female VTubers who are male that you would never expect were. It's the same with it's it's the same with um, doing doing vocals for like music or whatever. You know, it's uh, there's so many different spectrums of uh, how you can project your voice, and I, I find I find it fascinating. Like uh, voice, the, the exactly no headphones. You're absolutely right. Voice, the the power of a voice, is something unilaterally only. That only humans have the privy to be able to use this way. And the the the, the amount of untapped power that the voice ha the voice can do. I mean, have you guys ever heard Mongolian throat singing? Like this shit sounds like they're tearing their voice box up with a goddamn grater cheese grater. But yes, as the the entire thing that I was trying to point out was more so about um the concept of voice is a prominent feature through our lives. And to some of us, our voice means so much more. It's that ability to... Because really, what one of the... What, like, there, is, there are several things about a human that are on the forefront of what we see and hear when we first encounter someone. Like, the, the way we first determine somebody and their intent is by how they look, how they sound... And technically, their smell as well, but you know that that's more of a <laughs> that that's more of a uh, an etiquette thing than a than a sensory thing. Um, but I mean, even even to that degree, you know, smell is also very important. Um, and uh, I think um, trying to meet our pinnacle, trying to meet our oh, what would be the word? Um, Trying to achieve our zenith, as it were. The voice is a big part of that, and for some of us, the voice is way more, way more of a uh, a milestone than for other people. Why does your model look differently today? Uh, this is because this is uh, Makari from Universe 1.5. I am the Makari that existed uh, when she first travelled to an alternate universe, and uh, I came into being. Yes. Um. So whenever Makari's out in a universe cartographying, um, I'm here to fill in for her. Yes. Unfortunately, my universe got stuck in the uh, 1970s. So, no, sorry, the 1980s. So, yeah, the graphics never really got past uh, PlayStation 1. Uh, I hope I can one day find out how to begin voice training. Honestly, headphone, there are some great YouTube videos out there. Um, but it, it all really comes down to... Music fundamentals. It's about listening to your own voice and working at very slowly changing certain things. You have to under like it, um think of it like an instrument. Every instrument has its working parts. When it comes to your when it comes to your voice, you have to worry about hold on. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my face on first. So when it comes to when it comes to your voice, you are you are controlling your phalangeal tubes. You're controlling your larynx. So I want you to, actually I want, I want you to look at something. So when you when you do when you speak, you notice this little dip here that goes up and down. The higher the pitch you make, the more feminine you want to sound, the higher you want this voice this this little lump here to be. So if if I if I do a really deep voice, you can see this little lump here. It's all the way down here, down, down, down. But if you 
if you do really high, so do this me. Put your finger right here. Put it, put your finger right here. And you'll f if you speak, you'll feel that little lump going up and down. That's your larynx. And what you want it to be is you, if you're trying to do a female voice, you want that to be pushed up. So when you're doing when and and the biggest parts of speaking that cause it to go down are your vowels, your a's, your e's, your o's, your i's, your o, your u's. If you say if you do a you 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 you, you'll feel you'll feel that drop. Like there there are certain like pitfalls with speaking like um su such as with your 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 vowels. So it's about the way the way a woman speaks is a little bit different to the way a man speaks. Um, women have a bit more of a um, not poeticness, but like uh, singiness to their voice. It's like oh oh not oh 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 e e e. You're trying to. It's it's quite it, once you feel it you'll feel it but when you drop your voice it's because you've not projected your your voice in the correct manner and you'll feel it drop um, the pitfalls are the thing that make it the the pitfalls are what make your voice sound masculine everything else in between those pitfalls will be maintained by how you address those pitfalls if that makes sense. So for a, a really good word is so, 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 so there I was, so there I was, so there I was, Ugh. see what I mean? The O in that so completely threw off my, um, the, 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 the flow of my, my, my speech. So another one, so, um, a big, uh, uh, there, there are like two, maybe three really key features that you're trying to keep in place when you're trying to learn your voice. You want to keep your larynx up and you're trying to restrict the space that's in your vocal cords because what the way and it, the voice is a science by the way it is more, learning how to do voice acting voice training or speaking it comes down to the um oh what's the word uh it's physiology physiology is that the word? Uh, yeah, it's our human physiology. I, su I suppose that's the word. Either way, um, it's it's more about the science of the human body than it is actually understanding what. It, it, it all comes back back to a science, basically. Um, so there are a few different things that affect speech: pitch, 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 pitch. Which is pit, your pitch is is how it's how high or how deep something sounds. Your resonance, which is then how it projects, and it's a combination of all of that put together that helps pr uh, create your voice. Biology, yeah, I suppose biology would be the word. Um, so it's not it's not a lot of one thing. It's a mix of everything. Um, so, if you're trying to get a feminine voice, for example, it's a mixture of how you project your voice whilst maintaining. And of course, this entirely depends on the kind of voice you're trying to get. It, um, you know, there, there are, there are, there are infinite, num infinite numbers of variations of how you can sound feminine or masculine or an accent or whatever. Um, so, for example, if I want to sound feminine, I need to make sure that I'm projecting myself in a bit more of a, a, a bit more of a sing-songy way, where I'm not sounding slow. I'm sounding a bit more like I'm putting a bit more of a emphasis on the ending and the beginning of my words. Um, it's like there's there's a very different energy to the way different voices sound, and even when you have the structure of how to sound a certain way, it then comes down to the way you project that. So fundamentally, if you want to sound feminine. You're trying to raise your larynx. You're trying to restrict the space in your vocal cords because the way the way sound works is the smaller space you have, 
the higher your resonance goes. The more space you have, and the more you open up your mouth, the more space that, the more you have your, uh, the more room you have for your, those sound waves to bounce around in, and it makes it very, very deep. So essentially you're trying, for a female voice, you're trying to restrict the space in your, in your neck. You're trying to reduce the amount of space that's in your mouth. So for example, one thing you really want to try and do as well is for a female voice, you're trying to raise your, you're trying to shrink the size of your mouth. You're trying to, you're, you're not trying to talk like this. You know, you're trying to reduce the space in your mouth. You're trying to reduce the space in your throat. And you're trying to get a really good way to understand um, the female voice is that the female voice comes from the nose. And if you're doing the man's voice, you're, you're coming. You want to try and feel that vibration coming from the chest. So if you're doing a man's voice, so um, the best way. Okay. When you're when you're talking really deeply like this, put your hand on your chest like this and you'll feel. You'll feel the vibrations from here. But the second you start when you want to start sounding more feminine, you can start. You can, that, that vibration, you can feel sort, sort of traveling up your, your throat and you want it, you want that reverberation coming from your nose instead. So do a deep voice. So actually, hang on, put, put, put a finger on your nose right here and then do a deep voice. You won't feel the vibrations necessarily from here. But the second you start doing... The second you want to up, the second you start pushing your um, voice up, you want to feel that vibration coming from your nose. Not every woman's voice is like this, but a good basis to go from is that you want you want to sound a little bit nasally. The nasaliness means that you're getting that resonance in the right space, and from that you can then branch off to sounding more feminine if you so choose. It's entirely up to you. As I said, voice is what makes you happy. So if you want to, if you if you want to really try and push it, you can get up get up to the point of sounding nasally, and then and then you can start playing with pitch. And it's also not about like, it, there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot to voice that comes down to, um, the way you speak it as well. How do you make your voice permanently deep? So, like I, like I be, like, it's the same with the way you, uh, you, fem you raise your voice as well. Going deep. You want to, you want to, when you're going deep, you want to feel as though you're talking from your diaphragm. And that comes from any different way. So, <clears throat> the voice that I spoke with for 29 years, <clears throat> it actually hurts me to do now. This was, la 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 la. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. So that that's the this is this is the voice that I was speaking with for 29 years. This this was my default voice for almost my entire life. Um and the I know it it helps you put into perspective how much it can change and how no matter who you are, no anyone can get it to change. Um this actually hurts me to do now, so <laughs> um So a deep voice basically requires you to open your open yourself up you need you need to be speaking from your chest and you need to be you need to feel like everything is dropping you're making much more use of your mouth as opposed to your nose you're opening up your throat and as i said it's it's about understanding the control of each of these mechanisms in your body it's about so like i said for a female voice you're trying to raise your larynx. You're trying to close this space. You're trying to close the amount of space here. And you're trying to push that voice through your nose. You're trying to speak from your, from your, from your face and your nose. And it's what you feel that helps you validate that. What if I'm a teen and I have a not so high voice? Well, it's all control. It's every, everyone. Listen, 
everybody, every single human being, unless you lack vocal cords, has the ability to do any voice. The most manly of men have the ability to do a female voice because it's a, it's a, it's a organ we all share in common and it's an organ that we can tune. So, you know, it's it's not something that no one ha that no is it's not something that's impossible for anyone. The thing is, the older you are, the more you have to work at reprogramming yourself. And I, I, I've, I've had to experience this myself because um, I've had to reprogram 20 odd years of my life from speaking very manly. But what I found along the way is that from learning how to do voice is that the control of the voice isn't about sounding like the goal you want. It's about, uh, it's about learning to control each of these different mechanisms in a way to get the result you want. Um, so, if you want, like, a TLDR, don't worry about the end goal yet, if you're new to voice training. The first thing you have to get to grips with is understanding how to control your larynx. So, a really good little, um, practice that you can do is have a certain phrase, um, that utilizes vowels and is about maybe six or seven syllables long. Like when I first started training, um, a phrase that I used, which really helped me um, ground myself was big boner bakery, big boner bakery, or um, one that some, oh, um, someone else uses, which works quite well, is heat from fire, fire from heat. Cause it's got the E, the E, that, that E will I drop your me. voice. And you can use that to um, anchor yourself. So if you feel like you're dropping, having a certain a, a, a good a good practice. As well, uh, say the say the months of the year: January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. A lot of something. Another one that other people do as well is the numbers. You assign a number to a certain way you speak, like ten, nine, eight, seven, <clears throat> ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. That all of all those kind of like little practices will help you stabilize your voice, and it gives you sort of um, training points. It, again, it, these see this as like having a uh, a trombone, and the different. In fact, a trombone works really well to explain this because it's kind of it's very similar to how sound travels. But you're trying to figure out the control of your voice. I can't reach deep. That's because if you've been, if you have a very soft voice, it's because that's the way you've been speaking your entire life. It's what your body is comfortable with. What you're trying to do now is try to reach a point with your voice that you haven't yet gotten to. So you're not going to get there instantaneously. You're going to go from having, you're going to go from having a very soft voice to then a little bit of a lower voice, to then a little bit of a lower voice, to then a little bit of a lower voice, to then a little bit of a lower voice. And you'll find, you'll, you'll stop where you feel comfortable, but you can't, you can't go from this to this in the space of one sitting you have to you have to take those steps between to get to that end goal hi varian good morning so if i had to give you like uh points to focus on if you're trying to do a female voice larynx up tighten your tighten your phalangeal tubes your phalangeal tubes that was always called fallopial fallopial the, ch the tighten your throat, basically. You want to feel like you are closing the space in the back of your lungs. Again, doing a Kermit the Frog voice is a really good way of getting that sensation. If you do this voice, you'll feel the back of your throat tightening, and that is what you want. So when you do this voice, you then start raising your, re your resonance and your pitch, and you'll feel that it just works. But you have to get that feeling first. Fallopial, <laughs> phalangeal tubes then, or oh, the tubes in your throat. I don't know. Um, so you need you need to feel your throat tightening, and your tongue, your tongue and your mouth space is also very vital as well. So, raise your larynx, tighten your throat, shrink the space in your mouth. Your tongue position is really helpful as well. Putting, doing a bit of a pursed lips, like doing a little bit of a smile here 
helps shrink that space a little bit. Um, you kind of want to have, like, even, this is something I've not quite mastered yet, but the tongue position. Um, you want to have your tongue pushed up against your roof, like, nah, 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 nah. if you make like a nah, 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 sound, um, that's the kind of position you want it. Mm -hmm. You're trying, it, it all comes down, down to just trying to reduce the space that, that those sound waves have the ability to move through. Um, what else? So, first, first step, raise larynx, lower larynx. To do that, to raise larynx, okay, really good, uh, really good practice to raise your larynx. Breathing. Ah. <sighs> If, you, if you're trying to raise it, you want to go, ah. If you're trying to lower it, you want to go, ah. So. Um, the, way you, the way you do a breath, you want to you be going, ah. Not, ah. Try, try something like, try, try doing a, a breath. The, the, the. For the way you breathe really helps how that larynx sits. So doing those like sort of more high, higher pitch breaths, that pushes that larynx up. Likewise, they're going those kind of like monkey noises. That's a really good one. That that monkey noise will lower your larynx instantaneously. Um... And again, putting putting your finger against your throat so you can feel where that lump is, that that your, to feel where your larynx is, works wonders. Likewise, putting your finger on your nose and your chest will help you feel where that vibration is, which kind of helps contact your resonance. So on your chest, if you feel that vibration on your chest, it means you're still in that masculine in that masculine setting. If you can feel it coming from your nose, then that you can that that sort of helps you realize that that voice is and that resonance is coming from higher. It's a higher resonance. See, see, it is like the deeper your voice, the lower the part, the lower your body is going to come from. Um, I mean, you joke, killer, but something you can unironically do is grab yourself by the throat, and that helps reduce the space that's in your neck. <laughs> it's just, I wouldn't advise it, but it it, do, it does prove the point that it, it it's that space that you have. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much all I have to say for that for timing. Um, I don't know what else to say actually. Uh. Yeah, so I mean, whether you're trying to like feminize your voice or whether you're trying to masculinize your voice, all of what I've just kind of covered will help you with it in some way or another. Um, learning the theoretics, learning the practical, voice requires practice. And no matter how much, no, no matter how much you want to change your voice, the only way it's gonna change is if you actually put it into practice. So, you know, setting aside a couple of hours a day, or maybe like even 20 minutes a day, every morning, just like say, when, when you wake up, go, ja January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, remember, or anytime you've got a free moment, just use your grounding phrase to help, pra to help set your voice th in the state you want it to be. Bodie, good morning. Thank you very much for the six month reset. Also, Killer Snake, good to see you. Hi. Ah. Hi, Janie. Honestly, I might even highlight this entire section just to like put it out there for people because I know that, again, I I may not be the best in practice with my voice, but I know the theoretics of of how to get your voice to sound the way you want it to. So I hope I hope that was helpful. I hope um, you know I hope that was informative to some people because I know for, I know for a lot of uh, 
Again, not even just trans people. I know, I know for a lot of people who are, have this aspiring need or want to change their voice, sometimes it's just trying to understand where to fucking start. And I know it was the same for me. I, I, I was lost with my voice for such a long time until somebody just sat there and said, okay, McCurry, well, this is what you need to do to start. To probably turn the whole section into... Yeah, I think I will. I think I will. I'll make it a highlight because... Um, I, I, I am I am moderately proud of what I've learnt. I just wish I had the mental stability to actually keep it going. <laughs> like, for all intents and purposes, I have the ability to sound the way I want to sound. Like, if I really want to push it into my element, I could absolutely sound this way all the time, every time. It's just trying to maintain that with the way my brain is and how excited I get. It's kind of difficult. But hey, one day, one day. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm way too dis easily distracted. Although, to be fair, it is like... It d so, the word that you're looking for is anchoring. Anchoring is where your voice sits as default. So, for example, how I used to sound like this back in the day, that's what my voice was anchored at for the last 30-odd years. Whereas now, my voice is more, although it's not anchored where I want it to be, uh, with the with the effort I've been putting in, this is kind of where my voice naturally sits nowadays. Um, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, depending on the day. Um, so, you are trying, you, the ultimate goal is that if you're trying to anchor your voice, you want to try and go above where you're trying to anchor it. So if you're if you're if you're trying to anchor it in a much more softer in softer, you want to get up here because it's stretching again, it's stretching your voice into a way that is above what your anchor point would be, but then it helps it fall back down. It's like it's like training muscles. Right? It's like training it is training a muscle. It's like going to the gym and doing arm arm workouts. You work out so hard to build your muscle up to a really big size. And then it slowly shrinks back down and gets to a point of rest. It's the same with your throat. It's the same with your voice. It's the same with how you want to anchor your throat. And to be honest, it's worth going above what you want. Your It's worth learning how to get above your, your goal. Because if you stop at your goal, then you won't know how to you won't know how to do your um anchoring phrase as well so for example if i wanted to sound like this and if this was my ultimate goal i would want to i, I would want to do a, i would also want to learn how to speak a bit like this that way i could then bring it back down if i so needed to so for example if i was doing if say let's let's just say this was my 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 the voice that i wanted to get if i wanted this as my anchor point I would learn how to do I would learn how to do my vocal training for this. It's a little bit higher, but it allows me to then bring it back down into a point of rest. Oh, Raven, good morning. Danny, hi. Yeah, sorry, you you just tuned in at the uh, latter half. We were just I was just teaching chat how to do vocal training. Uh, with what you just said, I should do. I and I actually managed to get a decent feminine tone of voice. Now I just, <gasps> I'm so happy for you, Bodhi. That's amazing. You know what, maybe I should like do. Maybe I should just like offer vocal coaching. Ah, <laughs> uh, this puts, ah, uh, this puts it into a better perspective than YouTube could. And that's what I'm trying to help with because I know that for a lot of people, uh, when you go to YouTube, you're learning it from a very um, formulaic perspective, and you're learning it from how they learn. Make her a check when you can. Nothing special but a message ext. Oh, thank you, Asge. I'll, I'll do that in just a sec. Um, what you, when you end up watching these YouTube videos, you're basically experiencing their process, but a lot of the time they don't teach you the fundamentals. And the thing is, learning voice is so different from every single... Like, what one person's experience of how to train their voice is going to be different to another person. And it's why you're better off learning the functions yourself in your own way rather than trying to learn the way someone else did. Sure, learning the way someone else did will give you some elements of that control, but you need to figure it out for yourself. But I could sit here all day trying to explain this stuff, but until you learn what works for you and how your body functions, you're never going to be able to impart that training until you understand your body to its best. So just just doing those little things, putting your 
putting your fingers on your throat, putting your fingers on your nose, learning your, um, learning your, uh, hold on, um, have, have, having your phrase, your anchor phrase, so that you can go from down here, like, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. <laughs> All of that helps you understand your body. And there's so many different... I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you the different avenues you can follow to figure that out. So again, you want to... If I had to give you like a checklist of things to do that would help you. First thing. Larynx. Larynx is the simplest and easiest thing to control. Because it's all about your breath. It's all about how you breathe. It's how you project your voice. So, first thing, breathing. Make it sound higher. You want it to come from your nose and from up here. That raises your larynx. Because a lot of people's biggest issue is they don't know how to flex their... They don't know how to flex their larynx. It's a muscle that, for a lot of us, that we never use because we're so used to speaking the way we speak. So... By getting your larynx moving, it starts the process of your body recognizing, hey, wait a minute, I need to change. So then if you're trying to go deep, you go, oh, oh. and you'll see, like, again, you'll see, you'll know it's working. If you put your finger here, you'll feel it push up. If you want it down, you'll feel it, oh, like, what? watch this, watch this, oh, oh. see that, that little lump? That's the, that all that's doing is making space and 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 shrinking that space, shrinking and expanding it. Um, what was the other one? Um, oh yes, the vibrations. So hand on chest, hand on nose. If you're trying to get the female voice, you want that you want that vibration coming from here. If you feel the vibration in your chest, it's a guttural feel. Again, women can sound guttural, but in more often than not, you're trying to get that, you're trying to get those vibrations coming from your nose. Very lightly, and you want it very lightly, by the way. If you push down too hard, you'll force the, uh, the you'll force the space closed and you're making an artificial noise. Um, secondly, your, 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 uh, fl 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 flangeal, your throat. You're trying to tighten your throat. So, Kermit the Frog voice? is the best way to do this because it's literally putting your voice in a formation that allows you to do the female voice. You start with the Kermit voice, it closes your throat, it brings the vibration in your nose, and then all you do is you start raising your pitch and resonance, and then it sort of gets to that stage. Um... Grab yourself by the tits? Definitely. That helps. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Um, if you really want to just try and force your voice, then you can totally pinch, pinch your neck just tightly and twist. And all of a sudden you'll start hearing that noise go up because it's, it's forcing that, it's forcing that space to become more condensed. I wouldn't advise doing that all the time because that'll make you look weird, but it helps you understand what you're trying to aim towards. Um... So, yeah, TLDR, beginner stuff, larynx, get your voice up into your nose, or if you're trying to do a deeper voice, get your, get your voice coming from your chest, um, shrink that space, shrink the space, think that a, a voice is not just the emphasis of one element, it's not Sounding like a- sounding like a woman isn't just about sounding all high pitch and stuff. Because there are plenty of women who sound very, very masculine. It's about knowing how to combine it all together. But, um, if you want- if you just want the practices... Nose and chest. Larynx. Tight throat. Have a... Anchor phrase. Like, uh... Big boner bakery. Big boner bakery. I like- I- I- I, um... Singing. Singing to yourself in the shower is a really good practice. Like, A is for apple, oh apple you eat. A is for apple, oh apple you eat. Case in point. You, uh, and again, the, the things you're watching out for are your vowels. 
A E I O U. Anything that causes your um, larynx to drop. Especially, so theoretically, like that, that could also then help your masculinity as well. So if you if you're trying to drop your your your, if you're trying to sound manly, you want that to drop. You want to go A E I O U. And also realize it's kind of how you project that as well. It's the it's the force behind how you speak. Men will often have much more force behind how they speak, whereas women are going to be a bit more soft and dainty, daintily. Uh, they're going to require to be a little bit less uh, heavy with how they speak. So yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. And of course, you need to figure out what what voice you want. You have to figure out what what sound what what you want your voice to be. You want you want it to be. You want to know yourself, to understand the voice that is yours. It's it's worth having potentially people that you like the sound of. Like maybe there's a celebrity you like. Maybe there's someone around in your general vicinity. Um, Trying to mimic how they sound can be a really good little practice to get you in the general area of where you want to end up. Make it your own is the important part, though. Yeah. Hi! Oh my god! Oh my god, Oif, what's up? Yo! It's been a while, how you doing? Oif, we were actually just looking at the uh, photos of, your, of when you came around with your fursuit the other day, actually. I was looking back from my old Facebook gallery and saw you in there. Which good, which, which good old days, you know what I'm saying? I think my biggest concern is trying to control my larynx uh, without contouring my face. No, don't, don't, do not worry about that. That will just happen. That will just happen. Uh, you will scrunch your face up. You will make a fool of yourself. The, f the, the first. Come, 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 come. But for, for, uh, for a lot of, a lot of us at the beginning. Like for Christ's sake, when when I when I first started training my voice, I was walking down the high street just ma breathing to myself. You know, I was I was going, <sighs> <sighs> I and you will look like an absolute fool, but you need to make the time for it. Don't worry about how you look. Don't worry about any of that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, you have to do the thing to get to the place. Uh, Kaski, Kais, Kaiski Yamamoto. Thank you very much for the resub for 25 months. And also Lavak, thank you as well. Appreciate it. Oh, Aski, I just saw your comment. You like my hair? Hold on. I mean, the hair is tied back, so... It's just, it's not quite long enough yet to, uh really be that visible. That is kind of my, 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 I, I got, I got enough like a little rat's tail, but the ultimate goal is I would, I do want it to be, uh, like, you know, I, I, I want like a ponytail kind of coming over my shoulders potentially. Because to be fair, I, I really like this, I do actually really like this hairstyle, like having like the, the kind of fringe coming over. With like just a little bit on the side here as well to kind of like frame my face. What I've noticed is like having my hair tied back like this really helps like um, shape my face better. So the sooner I can get this ponytail growing out, the better I feel. <laughs> you see, I'm not one of those uh, kind of VTubers that is afraid to show my face. I'm very proud of how I look. I'm very, I'm very happy with how I look, and. Uh, to be real, my looks are only going to get better over time as I uh, exercise, as I grow my hair and all that jazz. Uh, yes, Logan, we watched on stream. We did, we did. I love your looks. Ah, shut up. You look sexy as well. <laughs> you like the headphones? Oh, the horns? Uh, the, 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 head, the headphones aren't honestly that spectacular. 
They are just like default uh, HyperX headphones. But these horns came from my throne. You guys bought these for me and they've been stuck on there ever since. <laughs> Ooh, I need to rest my voice. All this like vocal training has kind of thrown my voice out entirely. <laughs> I don't- I don't know whether to sound like this anymore, or whether to sound like this anymore. Golly gosh. I'm kind of similar, trying to become more androgynous overall, but I, Yeah, like, as, uh, I, I think that's something that needs to be emphasized, is that there's, there's no right or wrong way to do voice. It's what you're comfortable with, and it's great to have goals, but there is no- There are things that are defined as more feminine and more masculine, but you are not a bl you are not mandated to sound like that to be a woman. It is what makes you comfortable. It is what makes you happy. Christ, um, really good example actually. Uh, funny enough, this person actually follows me on Twitch. Um, 